So another thing to consider uh, when you're uh, putting together your model is that, uh, as I said, when they are imported, they're just imported as general uh, surfaces. And so they have no material properties or anything associated with them. Um, so one of the things that's a good practice to get into is to uh, assign all these different materials uh, appropriate material properties um, for what they would be in the building. Um, and that's also good because you can kind of add some uh, color and, and accurate um, uh, texture to it. So for example, we can see that um, that there's a whole lot of glazing on this building on the outside. So we can select all of the glazing here and just assign it uh, the appropriate material properties and um, like so, glass surface, like that. And then the other thing that's a good practice to get into is you can actually um, get the appropriate color uh, so that you can see. So uh, for glass, it, it, the hex code is going to be like this. And then the alpha code changes the transparency. Um, so now when you hit OK, your glazing actually resembles glass. Um, so the resemblance is nice because it allows other people to kind of visualize what you're visualizing. Um, um, and then the adding the correct surface parameters will accurately portray the heat transfer through these different spaces. Um, so you should attempt to try to identify what these things are in the building. For example, I would imagine that many of the wall surfaces would be similar to uh, gypsum. Uh, the structure of the building and the roof will might be steel or something similar. Um, uh, and there might be some wood somewhere in the building too. Um, that will be uh, part of what you need to figure out, but you should try and attempt to assign some material properties to your uh, obstructions. Um, the other thing that uh, you might want to look out for is for, for these models, we're going to need to do a little bit more work in terms of what the exhaust is going to be. Um, 2D. And so um, one of the trial designs for an atrium fire, which is the kind of the case I'm going over, is to uh, uh, exhaust the smoke out of the building. And so I would highly recommend you to um, use events when you're doing this um, because it's going to give you a little bit more confidence that you're modeling things correctly. Um, uh, again, the size is something you'll need to calculate uh, appropriate to the general exhaust volume, volumetric rate that you want to uh, achieve. Um, but when you use events, you can assign a blower and you can actually see what direction it's going to um, uh, exhaust air before you uh, model it. It's really important to get this right because if you make a mistake, then uh, it can be extremely time consuming to have to redo a model. So guessing, um, making sure that everything is correct is extremely important. Um, so if you sign in the event in exhaust, uh, like I just did, you'll, you'll see that it's attached to the surface, uh, but I would recommend that even though Pyrson thinks it knows what you want it to do, that you assign it so you can actually see uh, what's going on. So because it's an exhaust, uh, it's always going to be pointing 
away from the object that you're placing the vent on. So this exhaust will exhaust in. Uh, you don't want it to be like this because then um, it's going to be trying to pull air from inside the obstruction, which will likely result in an error. Okay. Uh, the same thing uh, is going to be important for doing the makeup there. Um, um, so it's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, a couple other things to keep in mind with these models is um, some of the other outputs that you might see. Um, uh, mostly slice files and devices are kind of the standard for uh, how you're going to display the results of your model, but if you are trying to do something specific, ISO surfaces can be um, pretty important for uh, visualizing different things, but the negative to using ISO surfaces is they're extremely uh, large, and so it'll take a little bit more time to, uh, to model something with an ISO surface especially if you use many of them. Uh, boundary quantities can also be very important if you're looking to see what the heat transfer is to a specific boundary or if you're looking at uh, flame spread or things like that. Um, but again, this is going to create a extremely large uh, output file, um, uh, which may or may not be what you're interested in. Um, you're going to want to make sure that your simulation parameters are what you want uh, in terms of what your start time is and what your end time is. Um, if you're curious about how things are going to be operating, if you're using control devices instead of just times, um, you can put your start time around when, uh, when those things are going to be occurring. So let's say you have the fans starting at 60 seconds after the fire and you just want to run a quick model to see if that's actually what's going to happen. You can have this start at like 50 seconds or so, and then you can see what will happen. Um, but typically for modeling the whole scenario, you're going to want to keep it at zero. I would highly recommend not touching the initial time step. FDS finds the time step using the uh, CFL criteria, mainly based on um, uh, keeping the low Mac flow assumption um, correct. So the time step will be as low as it needs to be. Um, so I'd, I, unless you're uh, doing something specific, I wouldn't touch that. Um, another thing to keep in mind is uh, when you're looking at the smoke in the space, uh, that's called the soot mass fraction. So that's what this is. You can change it to any species that you want. Usually mass fraction is, is good. If you don't want to view that because uh, I don't know, maybe you want to save computational time or, or storage space or things like that, maybe you don't need it, you can turn that off. But it's usually helpful to see it. Um, I would highly recommend always choosing a right time for the things that you're going to be um, writing out slice files depending on how long your simulation are, is um, i like to do it at one or five seconds just to keep things kind of consistent if you don't put anything in here at all fds has specific rules on how often it will output these uh, types of files but i like to uh, uh, have more control over them so i like to specify them it's also going to give you a better uh, control over when things are written. The more FDS has to write to a file, aka when it has to write the device things and the slice files, the longer it takes. So if you can afford to do slice files every five seconds, that's uh, much better. Likewise, uh, since my model is going to be running for roughly 20 minutes, I'm doing a restart file every 300 seconds. Uh, if your model fails, um, uh, you're only going to catch the last 300 seconds or so. Um, but that seems to me to give a good kind of risk 
uh, for restarting the, the uh, FTS model. And what this is, is say you have a numeric instability or something like that at uh, 605 seconds. Uh, you can actually restart the model at 600 seconds and um, see if it'll run again. Um, I'm not using any isosurface or particles or profiles or boundary conditions, so those are really unspecified. Um, in our case, the environmental conditions are probably going to be roughly uh, the default values. Uh, since the building is in Seattle, you might want to look at some of those things. Um, in terms of the temperature or humidity, um, but we're uh, not requiring to do that. Um, uh, there's a number of different things that you can use here that are a little bit more advanced if you're working on different um, uh, things. If you're analyzing wind, ground level is important. If you're changing the visibility for some reason, you can change these values, but um, if you're choosing to change those, I would highly suggest you explain why you're doing that. Uh, you can use wind if you think that's important. Changing the gravity is, is a good feature if you're dealing with tunnels, things like that. Um, there's a number of things in here about the kind of uh, fluid dynamics of FDS and, um, and how fluids behave. Uh, I would not suggest changing these unless you have a good reason and, and you can explain uh, I, why you're changing these. Um, same with radiation and all these things. And then as always in Pyrocin, it gives the option to add in uh, your own uh, uh, fields. So that's kind of the kind of overview of the miscellaneous things that you might want to be thinking about when you're building your model. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of an overview of Finding surfaces, making sure that you're using uh, vents, and then kind of the parameters that you want to run FDS.